Okay, very, very good afternoon, everybody. And this time in Tea and Tales, I have very, very interesting uh, friends of mine. No? Also, my colleague in the company, the Generations Company, I have Sunil Afrin and um, uh, they have been part of the organization for some for five years, some for 13, for some for 10. And this Independence Day, when we're talking of freedom, we're talking of freedom of speech, freedom of expression, and something which has been very, very close to us um, in the company. No? It's one thing that we feel that the freedom of speech and freedom of expression is close and it's working out. But other is to figure out from our own people that does it work, does it work, can they speak or not speak? So I thought on the eve of Independence Day, I get my people on and we go live. So I don't ask them, no, like you know, in the four corners of the office, no, is things good. And I give them a platform in which no, we are live and everybody can hear us speak. And then I want them to know, uh, ask this question of uh, what should we do differently for the organization? Are they free enough to speak what they want to? Do, does the seniors in the organization listen to them? Do they have a role in you know, defining how the generation company will be? And as minister, what are aspirations? So let's say if we make them speak you know, and we say, okay, now you're CEO from tomorrow, what are the things that you will do? So we will have some good fun, we'll be live, all people, and we shall hear what does freedom mean to them, what is freedom of speech to them, and is badic a free place for them, and can they speak? And if they become the CEO, how would they do things differently? So we are have a lot of fun looking for some good, interesting questions from your side. I said live, so anybody, if you put in any question, I'm going to ask my own people, and they are going to answer. Let's see how free they are in their answer. And that is how we shall test the culture of a company. Are we really, as we feel, a free company that we don't speak, or is it just a feeling that we have as senior management or as a CEO that we have a company which is very free that people can speak? So I thought let's do the experiment. Let's have some great fun. So all of you who are watching it, don't hesitate, put in your questions. Let's ask Sunil, Afrin, and Smita. And let's have some good fun. Now, let me tell you some interesting facts about them. No? Uh, Smita has been part of our HR team from uh, very early on, about 30 years now. And she loves uh, dancing, reading, you know? and uh, she is very, very communicative. And she you know, talks about compliance, policy, governance, employee relationship. That's what she has been doing. You know? And then we have uh, Sunil. He is our um, gym man, no? I think right now you see a lean screen, otherwise he is that six-pack bodybuilder, no? I think the lockdown has got him out of the gym, so, but now he's working on getting lean. Our, uh, the most enthusiastic, most happy player I ever see, no? A marathoner runs, and he actually gets me raw complex. So when I you know, see him at the water cooler, I always ask him, Phil, no, this is really good, man. You're really building it very well. And one of the most popular employees that we have in the company. And then we have Afrin. I've never seen her not smiling. Come what may, all the smiling, what of standing. She's in part of business relationship. She's in part of sexual excellence. She has a bank account. She has a very tough relationship. Very exceptionally good job. So I have three bright youngsters you know, for today's show. And we are going to talk about freedom of speech. So let me put them some difficult questions. And obviously, it's reverse order. So Sunil, Alfred, Smitha, don't hesitate to ask any difficult question that you have. No, and Alfred, you, you are a tough person monitoring, trekking. So, and uh, Jimmer and Dancer. Oh, let us see. Yeah, Manak has already put his comment. We're a free company. We can talk our heart out. So let's see, Manak, that's how we feel. Let's see these three friends of ours are able to demonstrate that. So let me start with one of the difficult questions. I'll start with Sunil. No, let's put him in the spot. All is Jimmy. Let's see how much it works. <laughs> Sunil. Yeah. You, Sir, uh... So no, I, it's a question. It's not too easy. You say what you want to say. Now the freedom starts now. You're the CEO of the company. So what will you change in Bajajans that you feel you're not happy with? And you feel this particular CEO is not doing this really good. We should do it differently. No? Over to you, uh... Sunil. And what I want to say. So let's hear you. Yeah. Sir, uh, so here uh, I would like to first start off uh, with the culture, uh, a very open door culture and the feedback driven culture that we already have in our organization. So that's what something makes me belong to this organization. The way uh, in which all the top management is approachable and the basic tasks that uh, my job responsibilities uh, that demand uh, a lot of innovation. Since I am into product development, we need to challenge a lot of old paradigms and old thought processes. As an organization, we have uh, this philosophy of looking towards innovation. So challenging the prototypes and the uh, old paradigms is something that we do on a daily basis. 
so uh, for so, that the open culture that has been promoted in the organization is something that make me feel belong to this organization so uh, if we uh, uh, want to change something is uh, i would feel that we would want to have more engaged uh, environment where uh, various cross functional uh, discussions brainstorming could also have just like you promote uh, various um, uh, town halls where we have a lot of open discussions where people are allowed to ask questions so similar kind of things that could happen based on uh, the other features as well as the products and uh, the other aspects of the company is uh, really something that i feel we should look forward to We will be very happy to know that exactly what you're thinking is what my head of HR is putting together. We are going to have sharing economy now, where you are going to have cross-functional team solving problems, having discussions. No, make the most of it. It's getting launched already on the discussion table. Okay. And project discuss leader that discussing on jump to the bandwagon, Sunil. I'm so happy to hear this. So good, you came out with a point. In which the team is already working and putting it on, and I'm sure you'll enjoy this new thing. So as a company, now what we decided to do, and this for everybody, and I want that so if, if nobody else wants to pick it up, do. As a company, we decided we we'll have a project um, in which we we'll put up the project. Any team member, class functional, can apply, decide, they get selected, and they create and make projects for the organization with a huge difference. So they have all the challenges and talks. We we'll take it to the next level. And so, thank you for putting it together. You would make a good CEO. I can see any CEO who talks of transparency and talks of communication will always be a good CEO. Smitha, you are in HR. You know, all these exit interviews and all that you have done, compliance. You are a tough HR person, huh? All the tough part. Yes. So the yes, question sir. now: If you, you become the CEO, so what will you change in the generations company that you are not happy with, you know, or something you know, which you feel that the current management or current CEO does not do well enough? uh so i would uh, uh first i would like to tell you that uh, we as an organization uh, have a very good culture sir and uh, we are a very transparent people uh, be it um, the head hr or ceo cfo as an employee we can reach out to uh, all the leaders you know and uh, we can talk to them so this freedom which we have got in this organization and i have seen this since the time i have joined this organization in since 2007 and the culture has not at all changed sir in these uh, you know 13 years of my career with bajik uh, so if i become a ceo um, there are a lot of things which hr is already you know talking about uh, the policies like sabbatical policy work from home policy which is uh, you know related to the employees benefit and you know for them to work in a in an organization which thinks about the employee and their work culture so i would say that um, if i become a ceo i would bring all these policies you know in uh, implement these policies so that uh, our work culture becomes free for the employees and the employees work more efficiently sir that's well, that's fine that you're doing you're not challenging us enough you tell us often this is bullshit you guys don't do this well enough if i was ceo I would change it. <laughs> Go for it. Let's hear it from you. Don't tell us what you're doing. Tell us what we are missing and what we should be doing for all of you as a company. Now you are in the HR compliance group. Let's hear from you now, unbashedly, of what stupidity we do in the organization which you are not happy with. And now you no, are the actually, CEO. So you do it. Yeah, so do it. Actually speaking, I don't feel like there is any stupid thing that we, as an organization, we are doing because we have all the policies in place. we have all the norms so i really don't think that you know we are in, i'm working in an organization which is which is stupid and you know it has some policies which are uh, not meant for the development of the organization or development of the employees sir so really you have to challenge with a more she is happy <laughs> with what i'm doing no how can we be happy we should always be honest but she is part of hr so she is very careful now huh? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Okay, right stuff. And with that, we move to Afrin. No, Afrin, from your perspective, no, you are the CEO now, and you said, okay, this is what I will do the moment I become CEO. No, this is not what's going good in the company. Uh, since the time I've joined the company, I have experienced uh, the uh, freedom to speak anything, uh, my opinions, views, and I think it's a really good, uh, you know, way the company treats any 
from a youngster to a senior person there is no differentiation everybody can uh, you know voice their opinions their way of doing how things have to i mean going forward what can happen how different can be and i think uh, the uh, the way the company nurtures the uh, thought process of an employee uh, it's really commendable uh go going forward which i would like to add, uh, you know think as a ceo which i would uh, want to implement is that the thoughts are there the uh, the uh, ideas are there and uh, how do we uh, you know empower a employee to maybe go uh, go hand in hand with the time and have that uh, level of empowerment for implementation also i think that is something which would uh, that's something i would like to implement. I think brilliant offer. You know, we did this um, survey, which we do every year, the anonymous yes. survey, and we try to take feedback about, you no, know, uh, what is it that uh, we should do more? And one feedback came that you know, our employees, though our score was very high in all parameters, I'm talking in the high, what was the low? So it is not very low. It said, can we empower our people more? And and this is exactly why we had a, a very strong meeting with the team leaders and said, let's ask people again, you know, the question. How do we look at empowerment? What is the empowerment that's holding you back? No, because from our perspective, anything that you want to do, or you come up and say, "This is what I want to do, and this is the resource I want, and this is what I want to experiment." My feeling is that you'll get it. Now, if if we come through the empowerment part, that what more has to be done? No, Afreen, and we actually had this meeting with my senior team about uh, I think 20, 25 days back. And I actually told my head HR, I want to know verbatim from my people, what more do we do to empower them? Why can't you take all the decisions in our screen, no? And you should use your leader as a sounding board. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and do this. No, Let's see how can we know, uh, see something and do that. And there should nothing be holding you back from doing it. No? This is my belief of empowerment. My belief of empowerment is it's in the mind once we decide to do something, and it's good for the organization, good for people, and good for us, and good for our customers. We should just do it. That is what it is. Rest can manage. We have Smita will do the rules for us, the compliance for it. So he'll make the product for us. And we <laughs> shall do it. And this is no, what we should always be um, looking at doing it. Uh, so yes. I think very strong point put for, it, for you. And this is what came in the survey also. And we have put together no, the team. But my personal belief is team uh, rules are good. And that is for all our people no, who, who are part of the team. I would like to know, uh, put it very, very clear that if any one of you has any idea and you feel this is going to be a uh, game changer, uh, don't hesitate. Speak your leader, walk into my cabin and say, Taban, this is what I do. No, give me the pool right now. And I promise you, and this is live recorded on you will have it. No? So this is what we have to do. That is how our nation is built. Now, each of us has a role to play to take it to where no, it has to be. So, uh, very, very good offering. So let me reverse it now. So I asked you uh, some interesting questions. Now it's over to you. Ask me the difficult questions. The more difficult it is, the better your bonus will be. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> good like that. So, I, I the town halls, I said, no, the more, the bigger the criticism, the more the reward. You remember? And somebody 125,000 rupees that right. Right, you know? <laughs> in the town hall. So yes. let's, let's have it. So who wants to go in first? No? Okay, so Sunil, let's start with yeah. you. You seen? Yes, yeah. sir. You want sir, to first? Uh, uh, sir, uh, so uh, I would uh, like to uh, have. I, I have a suggestion or rather a question. So, how do we ensure that with the changing times, with the changing uh, landscape of insurance, with the evolving uh, technology? How do we ensure that our existing set of employees and our teams adapt to these changing technologies? And what should we be doing? Rather, what are the additional steps that we should take so that we ensure that the plug and play happens? Because the rate at which the technology is changing, we need to adapt ourselves very quickly in order to get to the market in time. So in order to get that competitive advantage, uh, what is it that we should uh, bring in more so that we adapt to the uh, evolving spaces at a faster pace than the technology itself? Okay, so, so I think let me put it like this. So this challenge you know, comes through and most leaders have this challenge and most people have this question. So in one of the right. meetings with my um, head, tech head, uh, ops and uh, no, my uh, leaders, I told them that when we think of how do we get people to adopt, we have a problem. No? 
when we think of how do we get customers adopt, we have a problem. Because let me put it like this, that when uh, we had the e-commerce companies came in, did they have to think about how people will adopt? Or people just took it? Or let's look at, you no know, like a Facebook, or let's look at a Google, or let's look at a WhatsApp. Did we try to get people to adopt? Or did they just think it like duck takes to water? Yeah? Let's look at it. When banks came to the stadium, did banks have to force people to adopt? Or did people just take it? So the beauty of innovation is when you create something in which it is not about how to get you to adopt, it should be so seamless and so beautiful that people take it like duck takes to water. No? Now this is where we should be putting our heads together. The moment you talk of adoptability, the moment you talk of forcing people to you know, uh, to a, a kind of a, a cage jacket environment, it is not freedom. Right, sir. Freedom of thoughts and processes to me, you would create an environment in which people love to do what they have to do. And let me take you back to two quotes, which is very well and very well talked about. One is the Ford quote when he was making a uh, car, you know, he said, uh, uh, How would no, people know what they want? Or what the people who are Steve Jobs you know? How would they know, you know that uh, you know, what people want, what customers want? I'll, I'll define what customers want. Or the Ford said, if I ask people, they would say they don't want the horses. Nobody would talk about a car, no? Now, that is the level, Sunil, that we work for business insurance companies, what you should be thinking. How do you define and create something in which people take it like duck takes to water? So always revise it. Don't think that I have to get people to adopt, because then it's like slavery, no? If you have Correct. to whip people to something, or you have to put in compulsions, then there's a problem for you. That is the way I would think about it, but this is my view. No, so when I write, I would think like this. Yeah, so this is how it is. So good. So Smitha, no, you look kind of serious. No, so, no, yeah. that's better. With ask what you want to ask. Let Let's see. Yeah. Any Any uh, Any question? The more difficult. Yes, sir. So as I'm part of HR, so I will ask a question which is related to the employees only. Um, okay. So actually, we were uh, we had done some few calls, you know, in between, and we were calling employees with the COVID time, and we were asking them about how they are, how their family is, and all that. So during time, there was this one question which was always, you know, people were saying who were staying in the remote areas, and you know, who, the VSO uh, employees especially, where they had the technical, you know, problems and uh, due to which they were not able to give their 100% of their uh, job. So, uh, you know, I want uh, the department uh, who is taking care of it should, uh, you know, really uh, reach up to these people who are, you know, facing such problem and uh, help them. Oh, okay, sir. So let me appreciate the work done by, you know, uh, HR and, you know, and uh, stalwarts like you. You reached out to every employee on phone. It's not an email, no? I think I was so super impressed that every employee the company was called, spoken to, the well was taken care of. Uh, you set up the helpline for mental health. If somebody had any stress, they could reach out. You created the network where families of people could also reach out and for partners, no? That was very, very commendable. Now, let me answer your question. Now, let's have an employee. If I'm in a place where connectivity is low, you know, and I let me take you back when, when you started the company in 2001. 2001, you'll be surprised, not many years back. You know, I, I may look old, but I'm pretty, pretty young. Let me put it like that. Yeah. But 1920 years back, in the country, we didn't have internet like the way you have it. Huh? So we had to have these lines. You know, just about 19 years back. You know, it sounds so funny. We didn't have a phone with cameras. Huh? So when we had to issue policies, and light uh, was, uh, power cut would happen. Uh, and with candles, which we had to switch on to you know, do some paperwork. Then we would go to cyber cafe. And we would you know, have created environment in which we would do upload documents. And then they would start getting you know, uh, to uh, be printed out. You know? See, when you have a desire to win under any circumstances that you put in, and you have clarity of thought, you will become a legend one day. That is my belief. So if you are in a position where you don't have uh, connectivity and you do not know what to do, you figure out as an employee, what can I do here? Maybe I can create awareness for insurance here. 
which may not give us immediate results. Maybe I can look at people who want employment. Because right now, if you look at in COVID, 10, a lot of people losing jobs. And you'll be surprised to know, Smita, insurance companies provide the maximum job. We have a vision of providing 1 million jobs. Huh? So can I create, let's say, in my location, where I don't know, 100 uh, uh, boys or girls who want to take up agency on a variable post, can I do training for them? No. How can I contribute in the environment that I am? No. That is something where, which is an employee I would talk. And I should talk up to my boss and say, boss, I have poor connectivity. I'm sorry. I can't help you in this. But I am doing this. You think it's a good job I'm doing? Can you guide me? Who in the company should I talk? I want to deliver this for the company. No, This kind of feeling, Smita, when you have a reverse side for the side, that is the magical organization to be in. That is the thing I'm about. No? It's not about limiting yourself. Like my role is only X, Y, Z, and this is what I should do. The issue is, I work for a company in which we serve people in difficult times. That is what we do as insurers. We get paid to do good. I can't do this. This is my limitation. But a hundred things that I can do. If I can't figure out, let me call them and say, I want to do something. I'm stuck here, but I want to contribute. Tell me what to do. No? This is the kind of conversation. When we have it, then we create the magical organization that we all aspire to create. No, it is, it is that kind of feeling. This is the freedom that is there of heart. And this is what I have to respect it. So if any one of you who is stuck anywhere and you want to do something and you're not getting an answer, I'm always a live. I love people who, for whom boundaries, challenges, or something which is an excitement to overcome. You know? So don't limit yourself just by the boundaries created by the art structure. You know? so open yourself up, be clear, be free, and then do it. This is the way I would know. Look at it. No, uh, does it answer your questions, Mila? Sure, sir. And I think the message is also reached to the people that what exactly they have to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a lot of times in my life I was stuck, no? So if you look at I'm a I'm a scientist of education, I am a founding employer for the generation company. We made this company, we've been an MD for close to and a half years. So why why would I be stuck you know, with what education I have? Why would I be stuck with what, how I speak? I speak very fast. You will surprise with the when I go to international conferences, all my friends there tell me slow up and speak slow. You speak English very, very fast. Half of us don't get it. So, so I start my speech in which I speak very, very slow. By the time I'm ending, again, I'm supercharged and it's gone. Then the wave is slow, slow, slow. No? <laughs> <laughs> it's all, all about no, finding out and adopting to know what 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 we have to do. Our friend, over to you now. Now is your, your time to know, really, no? something. Uh, uh, sir, we've always heard you as a leader. Uh, I want to know your two daughters. As a father, what advice on freedom of speech or, or things do you give to your daughters? I'm afraid this question is too late. It's reverse now. <laughs> now take it. <laughs> 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 She is a doctor now, and no Mangalore. She is doing an MS in Gaini second year. Very proud of her fighting the COVID time, you know, and doing all the COVID duties. Really, really pushing it hard, working 36 hours, no stretching, non-stop. I'm so proud of her. I get worried for her, but then the country requires her, and she is delivering on that. My younger daughter is an engineer. You now she's also working. She is you now into innovations and product designing as a manager now. So those days when I told them to do something or give the advice is over, Rafi. Today, I give you one story. I thought about it. In one of my interviews, I was talking about you know, how people will save for the daughter's marriage and the son's dedication. I made that mistake of speaking out. I it was a live interview. I immediately got a call in between the interview, and I see my daughter's you no know, uh, uh, flashing, and I and I and I put a text to her. What did I do wrong? She says, "How can you say that? You no, know, it is so 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 biased. You're talking of daughter's education, son's uh, 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 you no know, daughter's marriage, son's education." I said, oh, no, 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 I made a mistake. So next interview, I said, uh, no, my, uh, my son's, uh, uh, like, uh, son's uh, you save money for son's uh, wedding and daughter's uh, uh, education. Again, she called me. When will you learn, you know? <laughs> How can you make it neutral? No, you're so biased. I said, okay, okay, I get it now. <laughs> How can we save for our children's education? So not today. I get all the advice. No, it, I don't have to Honestly, 
because I'm so passionate about freedom, you know, of, of uh, speech, freedom of thought, about uh, free. And from very early on, because luckily that's the way I was raised by my parents. They never told me, you oh, do this, do that. In fact, no, I did whatever I want to do in my life. The only thing they told me was, be a good human being, never cause sorrow to anybody, and follow the law of the land. In this boundary, do whatever you want to do. That is what I was told. No, so obviously, when 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 I had uh, two daughters and they were growing up, I was very clear you know, that no boundaries, minus be a good human being, follow the law of the land, you no, know, and make a difference to society and to people. Bring smiles to your face. So, as a father of two daughters, I'm immensely proud. But unfortunately, Afrin. Nowadays, they give me advice. I don't. So it is, it's a reversal of rules. So, they completely that. And I love it. I love being peppered and getting advice on. No? So I really, really <laughs> enjoy it. No? Good. Now, having said um, all this uh, point that we had to discuss about the company, about how things are, let's talk about your uh, personal level aspirations, uh, Sunil. So what is that as, as a human being you aspire to be? Or like to be known for, let's say, no, 15, 20 years from now, or when you hang your boots, or, or when you retire. So, how should, you no, know, let's say, when retirement day is there and you are leaving the organization, you know, then what would people talk about in the speech you know, that they, that that you would want to hear? Yeah, sir. Uh, so, uh, when I hang on my boots, probably I would uh, like to be a contented person who has uh, made a significant contribution to the organization has successfully built his team and has contributed to uh, the knowledge that uh, my subordinates at that point of time would be having. I would like them to look at, look at me when I am not even in the office for certain uh, guidance from me. Uh, this is the knowledge that I could have gathered over the years working for the organization. Also, just like you said, that not just a good leader, but I will also always uh, expect them to be good human beings to help the other team members to make them grow in their life and to work as a team together so as a uh, uh, as a person who uh, would probably 15 years 20 years down the line would be hanging on his boots i would definitely be looking towards these things that being uh, uh, being satisfied in my own achievement and also building up a team who would uh, uh, would take the legacy of the company for what about you? Uh, so if uh, I leave the organization or if I'm there in the organization till the you know uh, age of my retirement, uh, I would be I would like to be a proper legal consultant and I want to solve each and every legal issues which uh, our company or outside if I become a legal consultant individual, I would like to you know, uh, become a consultant for uh, a legal consultant, sir, basically. And I would also like to, uh, you know, be expert in the compliance uh, field, uh, which I'm really interested in, sir. And uh, to inform you, I'm also studying, uh, doing my further studies in compliance. Brilliant. Prince Mita. Afrin, what about you? Uh I want to build a legacy. I want to be known for something. I, when I leave, there should be uh, maybe a change factor or an agent or a, or some, or when I've learned from you saying that, you know, openness, anybody can come up, ask me anything, uh, irrespective of where I am, how, who I am, anybody in the company, any person can uh, talk to me and uh, have that, uh, Simple legacy when I leave so that people do remember. Exceptional. Now, since you guys said this, let me ask you the last difficult question. Sunil, do you see this in your leaders of what you think you shall be doing when you hang your boots? Do you see your leaders walking that talk? And when they retire, would you be speaking about what you want to be spoken about when you retire? Do you see it like them or do you find them lacking in, in what you have seen for yourself? Absolutely, sir. Sir, so just uh, when you asked me those questions, so the thoughts that I could gather were basis what I see in you, uh, the basis what I see in my leaders. So that has come to me. This is something is a learning. When we uh, try, uh, when we uh, entered into this phase of corporate life from our campuses, I was a management trainee when I joined this organization in 2013. We were like blank slates. 
whatever has been written whatever thoughts have been formed up whatever ideas or whatever things that i uh, i said a few a uh, few moments back when you asked me that questions probably all written all developed all formed up in this organization itself so sir to answer your question it is you the leaders in this organization who we look up to and this is what we could have gathered not uh, unless you would have been our role models uh, and all the senior uh, management in the organization they are acting as our role models uh, basis which we have been uh, looking forward to such things that uh, i just quoted a few times back okay so thank you ms smita do you think we give you enough opportunity to do what you want to do do you think one day will make you the compliance head if you want to be that do you think you yes, have sir. that chance i absolutely you... feel that sir Uh, because, sir, uh, yeah, so because I'll tell you, sir. Uh, since the time I have joined, I was an executive, and thereafter I have handled lot of different roles in uh, HR itself. So I have handled payroll, I have handled uh, joining till the relieving, then payroll, then compliance, and now I am also part of the posh committee uh, member. So I have. you know a lot of experience in terms of hr sir and this is all because of the team leaders and the super boss we have and the boss is like you sir so we have i have got all the opportunity in this organization thank you sir i am reminded At one of my levels, thank you sir one of my accountants once came to me and said i want to be a sales guy so i said looked at him and said why no and uh, <laughs> one of our um, uh, current sales superstar was a technical person once he also once that came and told me i want to be a sales guy i remember those days and i looked at them and said are you sure he said yes i'm going to we will give you the chance don't worry if you ask for it you get it yeah but then you have to fight it out it's a new battle you can't rest on your past achievements no this is new frontiers are you sure he said yes and he made them and today both of both this classic cases i remember because they're completely with no experience in sales they have been such superstars in sales that no i i can only thank that uh, we give that opportunity that's why smita if you have any aspiring dreams you should be able to fulfill it otherwise the failure from our side no okay afrim what you again whatever you said about no what people should remember you for do you think you remember your leaders for that or do you think no it will not be so you think it no it has to be something different uh definitely i'll uh, surely remember my leaders this is what i've learned from them i have had a privilege to work under a, a lot of people and uh, different teams from the i joined as management trainee uh, i've done sales uh, customer experience now in products so a lot of areas lot of opportunities and lot of people different teams i've got interacted with and internally be it uh, on a grassroots level teams like, like for when i was with hdfc uh, moina kanoj we used to all sit together uh, understand what Uh, each of the verticals are doing uh, give advice as to this can be done this cannot be done i mean how you know you should take it forward to a higher organization level also like where i see alpna you everybody has always uh, you know given this opportunity to us to speak to you know speak our mind to say what is better and i think uh, that's something which i uh, really uh, appreciate and i've learned to uh, inbuilt in my uh, culture in future right yes. thank you very much for your love to continue speaking i think running a short time this is one last message from my side to all of you and all all everybody is watching always be free in life no remember that because if you're not free in life whatever you earn whatever um, assets you may have it has no relevance it is like a a free bird put in a golden no a uh, uh, cage it can never be uh, free never allow the golden cage to uh, hold you back uh, be free in thoughts be free in expression and be in an organization which allows that freedom to speak to do to deliver to become what you want to become till i am around and beyond me also that bani generation should complete this culture we shall not lose the freedom for people to say what they want to say to do what they want to do no and with this note a very very happy independence day coming up tomorrow for all of us no we are a free country we are part of a country which is the largest democracy of the world we are part of a country where freedom of speech is respected no and freedom of speech is allowed no so with this note a very happy independence day a lot of gratitude to all of you for having joined in thank you very much no 
Thank you, Phil. Thank you, Smita. Thank you, Alfred. Thank, 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 Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.